Hey everyone, we're here with Lori Lee Triplett, and Lori Lee, you have a really cool special technique that has to do with indigo, right. and something I've never seen, so I want to know all about it. Great, yeah. Right. We enjoy indigo and learned uh, how to dye indigo resist techniques using the African style. Uh, my sister of the triplet sisters uh, lived in Africa for about five years and originally learned it there. And of course, once I started playing with it, I couldn't resist. Let's look at these quilts that you have up here. For example, this looks, I'm going to just, I'm going, I'm going out here ocean waves Good. <laughs> and, right, and so forth but this is uh, not painted so much it's it's an indigo process it's a dye process absolutely we use an indigo resist so we start with white fabric we treat it with cassava root um, and then after the cassava root is on the piece of fabric we dye it in the indigo then you wash the cassava out and that gives you this effect wow. in whatever design that you choose to make it. And is this is then a technique that has been used for a long time? Yeah, millennia maybe. Really? Yeah, if you go back to research it, you'll find that there were painting kits and dye kits found in the Blombos Caves a hundred thousand years ago. Oh my word, really? Right. Yes. Right. So and then look at this guy. This is representational as well? Right, and this is, I just call it hidden in the hills. It's a landscape. It uses the same technique of cassava root uh, prior to dyeing, uh, starting with the white fabric. Okay, is there smell involved? Is there heat involved? Is there things to be cautionary about? There is not smell involved. I mean, there's not heat involved. There is smell involved. If you use natural indigo, it does have an odor, and that sort of tells you that you're using- The real deal? The real deal. <laughs> cool. Um, it is safe. And in fact, the cassava root is eaten as part of subsistence diet. Wow. So you could even do this with children if you wanted to. Okay, let's look at a couple more quilts. Uh, this one uh, shows uh, several different techniques. This one has the painted, this is one of the oldest styles known. Uh, it's from a style that is found in the Mali cap and it's Oniko. They would take raffia and tie it around an object like a stone or corn or bean oh. and then dye it. Oh, wow. um, so that's a different technique that and, they use. And then of course the middle panel is similar to what you've shown but you've also incorporated uh, print fabrics and right. boutiques and so Absolutely. forth. Absolutely. Commercial so, fabric mixed in and it still works well. I think that's great and I love this little bunny rabbit that you've done with the kind of the echo around. Right, and that is very uh, African in style. Their animals are a little more stylistic than mine, um, but then they draw around it with the echo around. All right, now you teach. I do. And you teach this. I do. So if someone was interested in knowing that, where would they find you? Uh, go to the quiltandtextilecollections.com website or check out our blog or simply search for our names. That's fun, it's so nice to meet you and to see this wonderful technique. That's something I had never seen before, so I learned something new today. I hope you did too. Thanks for watching. <laughs>